Hi, I'm Mike Haddock, and I've been a stonemason for over 50 years. I grew up in the business. I worked in stone quarries. I worked with people that moved houses. And today I'm going to prove that you don't need special tools to do what the ancients did in the old days. You could just use regular granite and stone or harder stones to do what you want. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do an example. We're going to chip limestone and show you how you can carve into it. Then after that, we're going to go up to Wayne Ferry, who was a carver at the National Washington Cathedral, and he's going to redo what I tried to do. Then after that, we're going to cut into granite like this, which is plain old other granite, until we could get that V to prove that we can do that. We're also going to cut into granite like this, like they would do in Monte Picchu. And then we're going to get some copper like this, and we're going to drill into limestone. And I'm going to show you how we tap and use the star drill. And after that, I'm going to give you a little example. How we put a, a rock in it, and we could drill into granite. So I'm going to show you all that. First, we're going to go to Egypt back in 2007, where I filmed some guys actually carving stone and then right after that we're going to go into the museum and look at the tools they got and then we're going to start. Here we go. Here's the tools they use for carving. Looks like Wayne Ferry stuff. And here's the chisels. Stone tools. They had rope. Axes. Chisels. There's like a hatchet there. That can be used for cutting stone. Bronze blades of axes. The plow, yeah. I made my homemade axe. You know, for carving down. I made my little sketch here with uh, what the Sphinx is going to look like. And I could do it like this. I could start carving it off like this. I could just use another rock like this if I want to get some time. See? It's a little sharp, but you get the idea. I could get in there and start carving it away. Let's see how we're doing here. And then I just got another piece of granite. You see that? Just a piece of granite. And you start rubbing it like that. And then you just get another piece of limestone. And that is going to polish it up. So I'm getting there. And like I said, I'm not winning no trophies. But I'm going to make another point. This is a piece of copper. Now you know and I know. All the experts say they couldn't do it. That's all they had was copper. How did they do it? Now if you look at a real picture of this. It's really protruding out there. That's the face of it. These are pictures when I was in Egypt. And we can't do that. But all we're gonna do is we're going to get some pieces of granite. See them? Right here, some sharp pieces of granite. We're gonna go into here, we're gonna start digging in. So I kind of got around the sides a little bit. I get up in here. I got to get the pointed stuff and I got to get a little more careful and start carving it out from there. It takes a while to do this stuff, but I'm doing it.
cut this down. And pretty soon I'm going to have the sides finished. Well, so far, I got uh, as far as I want to go. And I'm not doing it perfect because I don't know how. But I carved the sides out, and now i got to deal with the face. So I decided that we're going to go up to Wayne Faree, Faree Studios. He was a carver on the National Washington Cathedral. And I'm going to let him help me out with the face and give us some pointers on doing faces. So here we go. Hi, I'm Wayne Faree, professional stone carver. My friend in Mason, Mike Haddock, came over, and he had started a sphinx carving out of limestone. And he wanted to show how a limestone could be carved with different things other than tools, traditional tools. He brought over a piece of granite that could be used to peck and chip away at a piece of limestone. Uh, a lot of the, the Egyptians were known to have had copper tools, and a lot of ancient alien theorists believed that, you know, the work couldn't have possibly been done with copper tools. Well, it could, if, especially if you're talking about limestone. Uh, but uh, Mike had brought this over, and I've carved it with traditional metal tools. And uh, we've done a video on that. If you're interested, take a look at it. I might have to admit that I'm not a great carver, but you heard what Wayne said, that they could do it with copper tools. So he did that job and he even signed it for me. And now I'm going to show you how I cut that notch right there using nothing but granite and a piece of wood and maybe a little copper. Well, today I'm going to take this piece of granite and I am going to cut into it like they did the sarcophagus and everything because they said oh it can't be done but I'm gonna do it with just using this uh, these stones and it's not gonna be a big deal I'm gonna show you that everything they're telling you is nonsense so to get the big stuff off you just use another piece of granite and you start chipping it off Oh, Mike, it can't be done. You don't understand. They had ancient technology and all that other stuff. I'm just using those little granite pieces, but I also got this from an archaeologist. And it's flint, and it's what the Indians traded from Ohio and Indiana it came, but they found it on sites here in Pennsylvania. And you could use this too, see? All you gotta do is get a stone as hard or harder to get this off. Now it could be done. You just look for the weak spot, you keep pitching it in there. No big deal. Now you can see my primitive hammer. I just put the granite in here and I just beat on it like this. See? No big deal. Yeah, it takes a long time. Let's try this side. But it's coming. Now these guys who did this and they were doing the unfinished obelisk, yeah, it took them a while. You gotta see when you're working with granite and you're not cutting into it, you gotta crush it. So you just beat on it, and you can see the crystals in here, like this crystal top. My hammer's falling apart. Just take it down. Now I'm going into my granite, and here's my lines. I don't wanna go past these lines to make that. Now you could use copper if you want. You know what I mean? It works. But you got to keep sharpening everything all the time. See, it bends. See, it bends. Look at that. We're not doing that. We're just pounding it. See how I'm pounding it? And I'm pounding it very lightly not to break it. And I just keep taking it off the high spots and digging into it. And then as I get closer, 
I'm going to have to get a little more delicate with it on the sides. It's nothing that can't be done. Now the secret is when you're when you're dealing with this uh, granite, you can't go too deep because you'll 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 crack this off. So you got to go lightly and just kind of wear it away. It takes a long time. I come out here. You know, for 10, 20, 30 minutes, I might get like a sixteenth of an inch down, but I'm getting it. Well, it has to be obvious that this is taking a long time, so I'm only going to go so far with it. I wasn't. I was going to go all the way back to here, but I think I made my point, and I've been out here doing it a little bit every day, and. See, you'll see now after this scene pretty much what it looks like when it's finished. See, you gotta work it, you gotta crush it, you gotta get these knobs off. I don't know if the camera could see that. You keep, gotta keep uh, splitting some, uh, what do you call it, granite up, making it work. But I got it, see? So this is the end result. You see that? I carved that into there with just using pieces of granite. And I'm not going to lie to you, it took a long time to do it. I keep coming out a little bit at a time, maybe a 32nd of an inch and I get it. Now this is a stone from Mata Picchu and Saka Shueyan in Peru. And I'm going to tell you the same thing with this stuff. You just rub it together like this, and you keep rubbing it, and you can wear it down and make it as shiny as you want. So you can't listen to them when they're telling you that. Now we're going to go to Egypt. Last time I was in Egypt, and I went to the unfinished obelisk. They had a, an example there, or an exhibition, where you got the dull right pounder. Now to me, that proved my point. All you got to do is keep pounding it, if you want to get the shape you want. So then let's look at that. Now if you want to shape a piece of granite, let's just shape a little piece like this. I'm not going to make a big deal out of it. We just want to smooth this out. All you do is get another piece of granite and start beating on it. See? And then you, you get it down. Now if you, if you look at my video on Makari 3, you can see the sides of that pyramid were all granite and it was unfinished. That's what they were doing. They laid this first and then they got the rocks and they start grinding it down. It's not, it doesn't work fast, but yep. That's what you do, you gotta get it down. Now, it took me about 10 minutes to do that, but do you see the in cave in it? No big deal. All it does is take time, and I wouldn't doubt they made like axes out of this. And you've seen my video on Egypt when I went to uh, the unfinished obelisk. So, all this stuff could be done just like Cusco and Peru. No big deal. All you gotta do is pattern one side, pattern the other side. No big deal. So that's it, the same stone on the other side. You can see where I concaved it in here like this. All you gotta do is beat on granite with a harder stone. Now let's go to the museum and they had a display in the Egyptian museum of all the stones that they used in Egypt. Oh, this is all the stone? These are all the different stones, all the stones in Egypt. In Egypt. All the stones in Egypt.
So we seen when we went to the museum that they had all different stones in Egypt that they could have used a harder stone to do a softer stone. Now this is from the quarries of the pyramids in Egypt and you don't have to steal them. They're, it's like gravel laying all over the place and you could get vendors who will sell, sell these to you. So, and right on the spot. So now we know that the pyramids, 95% were made out of limestone. This is a piece of limestone. And now I'm gonna do a very small example if I could just get copper and bang on it like this and turn it and drill a hole in limestone. Now this is just a small example, but we're gonna talk about drilling true stone, okay? This is a piece of limestone and this is a star chisel. These are two star chisels. And the old timers to uh, cut a hole, they just tap it and turn it, tap it, turn it, tap, turn, tap, turn, tap, turn, and it keeps going. That's it. You tap it and you turn it, you tap it and you turn it, and you tap it and you turn it. That was an old time drill. See how you drill a hole in limestone with that? Now you got a lot of people out there saying, here's a piece of copper, here's a piece of copper. It's impossible. We don't know how they did it. Let me get it back here a little bit. And you hold it and you start turning. This is copper. Everybody's got to agree with me. And you can see the, you can see the stuff popping out. See it? Let's prove my point a little farther. I'll take this piece of copper, like that, if I can do it. Okay, I'll take that piece of copper, and I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to use it as a star chisel, okay? So we know we could drill with copper, no big deal. Now here's that sample of granite. <sighs> My God, look at we're going through granite now. How did they do it? I don't know. It was aliens. It was this. It was that. I'm going through the granite. Now it's going to take a long time. I understand that. And I'm not going to lie to you. It's, it wouldn't be easy. But it could be done. Another thing. Another thing is you stick the rock in there like that. A harder rock. And you turn it. And that'll do it. My God, I have a hole in the granite. How did they do it? Well, I'm going to tell you something. It'd take a long time, and you'd have to keep changing the stones, of course. But yeah, it could be done. I love when they say it can't be done. It could be done. 
So I think I covered the basics, and that's all I wanted to do was prove to you that all this stuff could be done. The difference between yesterday and today is we got the diamond-shaped tools and everything. We could do it in, in an instant. They, they took days and weeks and months and years sometimes. But every, everybody should know this. When you first quarry a stone, it comes out of the ground softer than if you lay it sit for years. That's, so that's one of the things you got to know about quarrying. Now, the pyramids, some of them had granite the first 20, 30 feet or whatever, and that's because of the sandstorms. And I've been in sandstorms. I spent time in the desert over there. I was in the military. So one of the other things you should know is when they quarry stone, it's kind of patterned already, and they put those pieces together. You could take a whole mountain out of a quarry and replace it and face it like they did in Machu Picchu. I don't think that's a big deal. One of the things I said about Machu Picchu, and I, I say it today, is when you start working on these big jobs, you never ask the architects or the engineers or all the smart people how to do something easy. You always get the laziest guy, because the laziest guy will always find the easiest way to do it. I've seen it done before, and I'm sticking to that. So I have other videos out on the pyramids, and I show different examples on how they move the stones. And I live near Amish country where you wouldn't believe what they could do with a team of horses and some ox. I also have videos out on uh, Machu Picchu and the Great Wall of China, the castles of Europe, and I have a whole series on rock facing and shaping stone. That would be what they did from the Middle Ages up until today. So thanks for watching. I hope you get something out of these videos. My name is Mike Haddock. It ain't no big deal. Get it done. And uh, I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.